Flexibility. Flexibility? Okay. Somebody's already done all the work for you. <laughs> yes, that's, that's very nice. Um, Community. Community? <laughs> is that a, is that a ben, uh, ben and original or? Uh, <laughs> oh, it is. Oh, oh, wow. I don't read the front page much. Um, which actually we'll be talking about maybe a little bit later. Um, okay. I actually came to Drupal really for some slightly different reasons, um, probably than most people did. In fact, I actually was sort of anti the technology. I'm a programmer. I've um, been programming for a long time. And I was sort of anti the technology. My background's in object oriented programming. Um, many years ago, we made the ill-fated decision to build our own CMS. Then we went to one called Silverstrike, which is a very elegantly patterned, uh, open, sor open source, object-oriented programming system. But ultimately, there was a particular set of strategies that we were trying to implement for our clients. And they weren't strategies we came up with. They were strategies that the top websites in the world were implementing, and we needed a platform to do it. And the platforms that the one that we built, Silverstrike, uh, we've worked with WordPress, a lot of other platforms in the past, none of them had the ability to implement these strategies. That's why I came to WordPress. I mean, I'm sorry, well, that's why I came to Drupal. Uh, well, can we edit that out of the video? <laughs> um, it did take me a while to get over the technology and learn to love it, although I still curse every once in a while when I've got to build a complex module, and I'm like, wow, this is a crazy looking array. Um, but well, so what I'm going to be sharing today is what are those strategies that I saw several years ago that Drupal was capable of doing and uniquely capable of doing um, that's got me so excited about Drupal. There's really, I like to talk about a social class of websites. And effectively, I like to break websites into three types. You have basic websites. These are the poor, the poverty websites. You have results-oriented. This is sort of the middle class of websites. And then you have online leaders. Now, does anyone know what the Pareto principle is? Yes, tall day. I know what it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you state it? Or <laughs> uh, the Pareto principle is basically 80 percent. What's that word? That's, that's it. And, that, and actually what's interesting, I didn't realize this until just a few months, or about a year ago, I guess, is that actually Prado never created that rule. There was actually an economist in the 30s that created it and named it after him. What Pareto was actually interested in, and he did create an 80-20 rule, but it's a different 80-20 rule. He was interested in wealth distributions in Europe, and this is around Sierra 1900. And so he did all these studies of who owned land in Europe. And what he found was is that 80% of the wealth was owned by 20% of the people. The reality is the same thing happens on the web. There is an incredible amount of money. I mean, a lot of us are, are in here. We see the IPOs. We see the stock offerings of the Googles. Um, we see, we see, if you guys saw the uh, social network, you saw you know, what happened. The richest billionaire, the fastest ever to, I think, a billion dollars. Is that there's all kinds of money being made online, but there's actually only a very precious few who are making it. There's, there are millions of websites that are really that the have-nots, the sort of the serfs of the internet. And what I was interested in is how do we get websites to be leaders? Now, when I say leaders, I'm not talking about how do we build the next Google. Um, in fact, actually, what I love sometimes if you go to Google and you type in define colon and some word and it comes back with like the absolute perfect definition. Um, so I typed in online or I typed in leader and it actually came, I thought it would come back with something that's about oh, someone who's the best or in front. And it actually came back with this one about enlisting other people's help to further a cause. And I think that's a fantastic definition and very appropriate for Drupal. When I talk about being an online leader, I'm talking about maximizing success in your niche. So you might be, say, a roofer here in Austin, doing the best you can with that. You might have a nonprofit, and maybe you want to be promoting green technologies and just promoting your cause. So doing the best you can in your niche doesn't mean being the next Google. Also, maximizing your returns. And again, if you're a for-profit business, that's generally going to come down to dollars. If you're a nonprofit or there's some other type of cause you're promoting, that could be awareness. It could be people signing up for your cause, signing up for some campaign that you have. And then maximizing goodwill. Goodwill generally long term turns into returns. Um, but those are the things that when we talk about an online leader, that's what I mean we're trying to do. Cornerstones of online leadership. 
The first, the first part is not to your website, it's an audience. You need to engage that audience. You need to make an impression. You need to convert them from a uh, standard user into, into a champion for your brand or, or someone that's actually doing something of value with your brand. You need to retain them. Uh, you've probably heard plenty of stats, there's lots of them out there, pick, pick anyone you want, about how much, ex how much more expensive it is to gather a new customer than to retain an old customer. Then there's, a, then, so there's these five cornerstones, there's two more that are rolled together as process. And we're gonna get back towards the end of this presentation and talk a little bit about the two different types of processes. And these are the things that online leaders excel at. And I'm gonna walk you through um, sort of a little intro into what these are and how Drupal can help you excel at these things. Five, 10 years ago, when we were building websites, when we were always talking about traffic, how do we get traffic to our websites? Then the web kind of changed on us a little bit. Suddenly there were all these properties, there were Facebooks, and in the early days there was the, the MySpaces, and there's Twitters, and there's all this real estate that's around, and maybe we don't need to get all the traffic to our website, Maybe we just need to have uh, some, some real estate, some little bit of space in some of these other properties. And so it's not all about traffic, it's really about eyeballs. Now eyeballs can be traffic coming to your website, or eyeballs can be uh, people seeing your brand and seeing your web presence out on other websites. There are many different ways to generate an audience. Um, I'm gonna tell you about two of my favorite two that I think Drupal excels at is uniquely, is, is, is uh, uniquely better than other CMSs. Um, ben actually talks about the first one quite a bit, search engine optimization. Basically the magic formula for search engine optimization is great architecture plus great backlinks plus uh, great content equals good rankings. Of course, if uh, what we're talking about here is when you go to Google, you type in some keyword, you're looking for something, who shows up at the top? Well, Drupal for years, Drupal out of the box actually has a very good architecture for SEO, but then there's some fantastic modules that extend it even further. And the list goes on quite a bit. There is a numerous number of modules. Luckily all those modules have been put into a list, a checklist of sort, um, and the creator of that checklist is sitting right, right over here. Uh, Veloci created a module called the checklist module that lets us know what are all these different modules that we need to enable in core to build a great architecture for Drupal. Another area that we've actually been working on is a suite of modules to help build better content. And so you can build better content manually, but it helps if you've got some automated processes to help you along the way, and maybe help you see things the way the search engines see it, um, along with how humans will see it. Great backlinks, that's a little bit more difficult. The CMS can't directly help you with that, although there are some modules that'll help facilitate some backlinks. But generally, having great architecture and having great content is going to be a good first step towards getting uh, great backlinks. Then, of course, the other area that I think is a fantastic system that Drupal is very well set up for is social media. Um, and social media can cover a very wide range depending on who you talk to, but there's all these places that you can be. And there's all these fantastic ways that Drupal can help you integrate into these areas. And just, here's just a kind of a short sampling of some of my favorite ways of doing these. 